Hey, Valuable Coaching, happy Friday. Uh, welcome to our last installment with Coach Chris McDermott from Whittier College. Uh, really excited um, for this last section here. Talks about kind of what he's done through COVID and, um, you know, it's, it's a great last section for this week. And, you know, we look forward to next week. We got another great interview. We'll tell you a little bit more about it after this one's done. But uh, let's go ahead and just jump straight into it with uh, Coach Chris McDermott from Whittier College. Um, well, we've been obviously dealing with lockdowns and lots of Zoom. You kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier. But what have been some of the, the main things that you've done during, you know, these COVID lockdowns and, you know, the restrictions that have been placed on you? in order to continue building team and also just to continue keeping your players ready to, to play whenever the time comes. Yeah. Um, you know, I think at the beginning is very different than what we're doing now. Uh, we've tried to keep it somewhat uh, kind of on that upward where it's a little bit different and we're adding, but we're trying to keep them interested and not just have it be very monotonous and, and the same. Right. So uh, yeah, I would say at the beginning we were doing a little bit more, conversational getting to know each other I made I made the girls speed date we always do that in person so we did it with breakout rooms which was a whole different experience as it as it uh, I'm sure you can imagine than just quickly making them move and I'll tell you I've gotten a little bit better techie that's for sure um, and then you know past that we, we've done uh Let's see, we did a trivia, you know, just some social type ones where it's about more of the enjoyment of getting to know each other and all that, where it's more of a trivia night. Uh, we did a, a talent show kind of thing where they had to present a talent on Zoom. I mean, those are more the social aspects that I think that we did kind of towards the beginning. Then we started moving into more. Um, I was creating Google Slides, uh, going over how we train everything and cutting film that we had to make sure that we exemplified how we train it with what we do so that they can get the immediate connection, which I think is good for them, even if, um, you know, since we're not in person it allows them to kind of see from a coaching standpoint to kind of see the diagrams, to see what things are, to, to read through and learn how we want things, but then to see it immediately visually with how we actually do it from our own film, you know? Um, so we did quite a bit of that with just really training kind of our whole program as a whole. And then I, I, I required our returners to make videos themselves on uh, how we train it. So see what we can retain and see what our returners can kind of add to and make a fun video and um, teach our, our, you know, our incomings and whatnot. So that was kind of like our first wave of fall, I would say. Then we started getting into like teaching them how to break down film because that's, I don't want to say it's easy to do on Zoom, but it's definitely very digital friendly. Um, what to look for, how to actually do a scouting report, different things like that. Um, and then now we're doing more uh, workouts where we have a, uh, where you utilize one of the apps, uh, Train Heroic, which allows me to input our uh, workouts on there. And then we do them together. They're all body weight, but we can do them together on Zoom. Um, so it gives them that feel of actually getting up, moving and kind of that same camaraderie. We have music going, the girls are encouraging each other. I mean, we're trying to keep that same culture that we usually have in the weight room when we're at, in person on zoom, you know? So, um, but yeah, so it's more workout based now. And then we're going to be doing some revisiting and, and, you know, we'll have some guest speakers and different things like that. So we've tried to keep it different, but you know, the same for a section and then kind of moving on to now we're doing this to now we're doing this. I think we had all hoped that we'd be back in person by now, but, um, it's, you know, what? it's testing my creativity. So, so I'll stay tuned and I'll let you know what we're doing next. <laughs> cool. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned that coach, because just like anything in life, when things throw you interesting situations, we're in a global pandemic. I know it sounds cliche, but I, I don't think necessarily Zoom builds character. It reveals the coach's character. And sure. I think if someone, if if a recruit was considering Whittier, believe it or not, because I know you pretty well, I'd be like, just watch that last segment. Because I think it just shows what you are as a coach. You're like, look, we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some social. We're going to do some family atmosphere. We're going to do some... Uh, we're going to do some, you know, workouts. some workouts. We're going to do, you know, uh, scavenger hunts or the things, you you know, talent shows. But then you also get after it and you're teaching them this is how we do a scouting report. This is how we do our drills. And you definitely took advantage of the situation. Like, look, I can at least teach them this and we can move forward. And um, then the guest speaker, you know, you're bringing in outside resources. So when I hear all that, I'm like, that's that's Coach Chris. That's his fingerprints on a program and he's just doing it through zoom. 
My question to you is because, you know, for example, with Cal, when we interviewed Sam, it was totally Sam. He's like, yeah, we talked about the Grateful Dead and we talked about music and we related <laughs> the music to our program, but he's in Cal, he's in Berkeley, like that sure. made sense and it worked. Do you think, and we haven't asked the coach this yet, do you think Zoom will change the landscape of recruiting in this sense where if it's legal by NCAA, but if you're like, for example, doing a scouting report with your kids and you decide, hey, we're going to do it on Zoom because they all have class and it's just more efficient. They're going to be in their dorm rooms. This is after COVID's done, let's say. But then you could probably legally have some recruits on it and sure. say, hey, this is how we do our scouting reports. Right. Or when you deal with recruits, now you can just Zoom with them very quickly and get to know them. Would you be open now to more doing Zoom with recruits than just getting them on the phone? Uh, to be honest, I I think that it could – be great. You know, I, I personally love zoom over a phone call with a recruit. Um, don't get me wrong. I still do both, but I think it adds that more personal element of me talking to someone, you know, and, um, and, and even if they're out of state, I think that this could be a really great way for us to utilize those out of state recruits that, you know, we don't have the budget to fly a lot of our recruits out here on our dime, you know? So, um, and, you know, unfortunately sometimes that might be a deterrent from a recruit being able to get to Southern California. So I think that um, this could be such a great resource and tool for us to utilize and, and make it more accessible to see our college and meet our team and, and the coaching staff and how we do things from afar without ever stepping foot on campus. Um, I think it's huge in terms of the communication piece with our athletes. Like you said, if there is a class kind of situation where we can maybe find a time where we can jump on the computer and we can do a scouting report or we can do something, or maybe it's on a Saturday and, and we don't want to have everybody come in super early for my commuters. And then now they're just sitting on campus all day till our game. You know, it's like, those are kind of the things that I think can make a big difference in terms of us still staying digitally connected to be able to do this, even when we have the ability to be in person. Uh, more than anything, you know, I, I think it's huge from a standpoint of like committee meetings and just meetings in general. Um, I know for me, a lot of our, when we do our conference calls, uh, we discuss things and we have such great relationship with our, with our coaches, you know, in the conference, but you don't get the opportunity to see face expressions or to see if people are agreeing. And I think one of the big things, cause I serve on a couple of committees that I've noticed more is um, it almost seems more meaningful when I'm, when I'm maybe at the plate talking now and, and giving a discussion, cause I can see reactions to, to my constituents or to my colleagues instead of, waiting to hear if I can hear them on the phone, you know? So I think it almost gives a little bit better communication um, and feedback, immediate feedback uh, than sometimes I would say just a phone call. So I think it could be such a huge resource moving forward as long as we're just using it as a tool and not our entirety, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. I, th I think that's one thing I've been trying to reiterate to the students I have that I, I'm teaching is just that, you know, as, as miserable as some of this has been, I mean, let's be honest, it's not, not ideal for any of us, especially those of us who want to be coaching and be in the gym with, with kids. But um, like you're coming away with kind of a, a whole extra new toolbox that you can use. So I think that's pretty awesome to, to, to get those skills, like you said, using zoom. And um, I think then it's a great tool for your players to, to learn how to, you know, look at, at film and stuff and, and know that they can kind of do it on their own, sure. um, their own time, their own computer and, and, have those skills too. I think that's something that sometimes is missed. Um, right. I don't even really remember getting too much of that, you know, at, in college, you know, a lot of game breakdowns. So that, that's pretty awesome. And I'll tell you, it's definitely desensitized to do when uh, you're on a team zoom and you say something and there's just silence <laughs> since yeah. that's what they're all used to for class. I'm like, man, I don't remember it being this quiet in the gym, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I've done some after school club stuff like that. And it is so odd. I'm like pulling teeth. I'm forcing them to try and talk. I'm like, the whole reason we have this is so you guys can like interact. And they're like, silent. Like, come on, let's go. My athletes, one of them made fun of me not too long ago. Cause I was like, listen, you guys, if you know anything about me, you know, I don't mind awkward silence. So I'm going to sit here till you uh, respond and I'm just going to stare. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you doing that. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and immediately one of my girls, Frankie's like, okay, I'll talk Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, um, you know, we, I, I've interviewed for some uh, assistant coaching jobs at, 
uh, division two and, and community college where it's like, well, you can either volunteer. Um, thankfully I had one who was very honest, um, you know, just said like, well, it's a pretty small stipend. Like, frankly, it's, it's probably not really worth, <laughs> worth your time. Like we can get somebody else, uh, you know, who's, who's a little younger and, and doesn't have family and, and can devote their time, but not worry about the money. Um, so how do you, how do you combat kind of those things when you're looking for assistance? Um, you know, we know you have a great assistant now, but I'm sure throughout those eight years and three other experiences, you've, you've had to kind of deal with figuring out what works best. So how do you go about getting assistant coaches? Sure. Um, and, and then we, we'll go from there. Yeah, I think I've been fortunate um, in all eight of my years through knowing all the coaches that I've been able to bring on. Um, having either a personal relationship with them or have worked with them prior at the club level or, or, you know, junior college level, or club, you know, high school level, whatever it may be. I think it's just a matter of like finding coaches that are willing to kind of put the time in and grind and whether they're my current assistant now or, you know, she has her, her nine to, you know, nine to five type job and loves coaching and is uh, fortunate to, be able to, you know, come in and coach at a high level afterwards, you know, so it, her schedule works out perfectly with us and, and all that. And, um, you know, in my years prior, I was fortunate to have assistants that wanted to coach and wanted to do whatever it took to get into the coaching profession and put the time in for, you know, a lot more hours than what they got paid for. That's for sure. I'll just leave it at that since it's a stipend position. Um, and, and the same thing, you know, I've had some great volunteers, um, you know, I'm fortunate my old high school coach volunteers with us and, or has these last couple of years after he retired from coaching women. And, um, and then we, this past year, we were fortunate enough to get our first GA. So, um, you know, we, we kind of have different avenues, but, um, every year I know might look different because I may lose an assistant to another program or, um, to a full-time gig and, and, and that's okay. You know, my, my hope is that whatever we do kind of goes with them you know, and, and that they can keep speaking highly about what we've done at Whittier. And um, maybe it opens up an opportunity for an alum or, or another local coach who, who wants to do the same thing that they did while they were here. So um, I, I think every year is just kind of unique in terms of finding it, but I've been pretty fortunate to have had the same staff more or less the last few years. So. Well, well coach, uh, I think one thing, and you would agree with, is obviously you're cut from the cloth of uh, Jack Coberly, who used to be a Laverne, you know, men's volleyball coach. And I know him well. And one thing, Jack, if you look at him, his coaching tree is huge. I mean, he's got a lot of people under him that are coaching. And in your, you know, realistically, not that long a time at Whittier. I mean, eight years is good, but it's not like you've been there forever. Sure. You've already had your assistants go and get, you know, in a sense, greener pastures in the sense where they're getting paid more and it's, you know, maybe a, a better situation for them to make a career out of it. Can you discuss uh, how that's gone with your coaches? And is that a goal of yours when you get a coach on board or you're like, look, you know, if you have an opportunity to move on to the division two, II, division one, or, you know, a head coaching job, you should go for it. Do you have those discussions with your coaches? Absolutely. I mean, I send them every full-time position that I hear comes available to make sure that I'm never withholding any kind of opportunity for them, you know, and um, as much as I want to be able to keep them, I want the decision to be theirs to stay. Cause if it's theirs to stay, then they're going to give me everything. But if it was mine for them to stay, then I think that's, that's tough. You know, it's not my decision to make. So um, yeah, I, I think I've been lucky, you know, coaches have gone on and, and done some great things. One of our, one of my first assistants, you know, she was fantastic is the head coach at a local at junior college, not too far away from us. And, you know, I love that obviously, you know, especially cause I recruit from junior colleges. So now I have a contact that can give direct experience of what it's like to be in our program and what it's like to, to play for me, you know, because she had the inside track and hopefully she uh, wants to send some of her athletes to that are in the right position to come to Whittier to do it, you know? So, um, but yeah, I think that that's important. And, and for me, you know, I was fortunate enough to work for, for Marlon Sano in, uh, in Texas before this. And, you know, he was super encouraging for me to, uh, well, he taught me a ton, I'll tell you that, but super encouraging for me to go for this Whittier job, you know, even while, you know, knew, knowing that it was going to mean that I was going to be leaving Texas and all that. And so, um, for me to not feel stressed having those discussions with him, I'm forever grateful because it may, I, he's a very good friend of mine still today, you know? So it's, it's nice to know that if I can do that for my staff, I would want them to have that same 
um, not have that fear of trying to leave or, or anything to be able to have those open, com- you know, open conversations and communication, um, knowing that I want what's best for them. So, and, and if they pass something positive along, then hopefully then that kind of helps people want to stay for longer or gets me my next assistant, you know? So, yeah. Um, with that, what, it, what advice would you have for, for new coaches who are out there searching, uh, you know, and have maybe aspirations of becoming a college coach, um, and, uh, you know, are struggling or, or, you know, maybe two, the only opportunities they're finding are volunteer opportunities and maybe they need something more than that. What, you know, what, what do you think those people need to do? I think if it means enough to you, you'll find a way to do it. You know, um, I, th- I mean, I can speak from direct experience. I, I was part-time at Whittier when I first got the job for my first six years. Obviously they kept, you know, the position became more lucrative as the years went on, but it wasn't until, I don't know what the last two years, I think that, that I became a full-time position at the college. And um, I think for me, it was, that was always the tough part of, you know, just being a little bit more candid. That was always the tough part of wanting to build and to do these things, you know, but I was fortunate enough that the college made the decision to create my, my position full-time and I'm forever grateful for that, you know, and um, but I don't think the opportunity, like the opportunity was too good for me to pass up. It was a, it was a head coaching collegiate gig in the city I was born in back home where all my family and, and, and so many friends are. And, uh, now my wife, but at the time my, my girlfriend, you know, and, um, I think for me, it was, I could either be afraid of that and see what could come of it, or maybe I can go there and, and turn that program into something and hope that, that they want to keep me, you know? So I would say for anybody who wants to crack into the profession, I obviously do what's best for you from a financial and family and and personal standpoint, but don't be afraid of um, taking a risk, you know, because I think the opportunity may lead to something bigger. It's no different than when I up and moved to Texas. I had never lived outside of California before and had to make my decision in in like a less than a week, I think, and drive out to Texas and leave everything behind and, I don't know if I would have gotten this job if I didn't have that experience on my resume. So um, I, I think that sometimes things, everything happens for a reason, of course, but I think sometimes those opportunities will lead you in a way that you might not expect and, and create a situation that you're even more happy than you thought you could be. Well, coach, uh, you know, coach might have more for you, coach miles, but you know, it, it's, it's really exciting because I remember when you got the job and I really mean, this is the ultimate compliment is, <clears throat> They are so lucky to have you. And I understand at the time, I remember talking to Jeff, who's one of your best friends and Jeff's one of mine at Laverne, as I said, you know, he's, he's taking a chance too, cause it's part time, you know, and, and it's just a beautiful thing what you've done with that program where not only are they competitive, but it's worked out for you. And honestly, congratulations from the bottom of my heart, becoming a full-time faculty member at the college level. You and I both know, uh, Coach Miles says how big of a deal that is. That's tough, you know, and, and you grind it and you deserve it. And, you know, uh, I've known you since you were 18, you know, so now uh, what is it now? Almost uh, 16 years. That's and great. it's just been, uh, it's been fun to see you develop professionally. And uh, I'm really glad you came on. And I, I hope for anything that it can maybe help your program a little bit. We're truly just trying to grow the game, listen to great coaches you give us ideas. We take it to the gym. And uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart from being on the show. And I really hope you can pump this out, you know, to your, to your recruits or the Whittier community, because I think what we're doing is good for the game. And thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Really appreciate it. It was great. Yeah. And my only last comment is, you know, I, it's been awesome to talk to all these different coaches, but uh, kind of the, the flip side of that, it's been a bummer not to be able to, to say, you know, what, hey, we're going to come show up at, at a match and be able to actually see what you guys are doing in person. Uh, right. you know, and, and so I'm, I'm kind of itching for when that comes around. I want to I want to go see you guys uh, take on take on Jeff and, and Laverne and and see what happens with that. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, to when that time comes. But, yeah, thank you so much. It's, it's great to have you on. It's great to meet you. And um, we look forward to, to sharing all your your knowledge that you shared with us today with with so many more people. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. That was a great finish to the week. Uh, and this was a slightly longer episode, but he had a lot of great information on how he's used uh, COVID, you know, how he grew his uh, job into a full-time position. And 
Um, you know, what I said right there at the end, you know, I cannot wait for volleyball to get started back up. Um, hopefully Kevin and I will talk a little bit more about some of the matches and stuff. Some, some games are starting, some of the, the Pac-12 um, is starting to finally get some volleyball in. No fans, unfortunately, but um, it'd be great to, to take a little bit of a look at that and see how some of these people are implementing their stuff. We, we want to take a look at Cal. You know, we've talked with Coach Sam Crossan. You should go back and listen. To, it's a long interview. I'll try and break it up maybe at some point. But, um, you know, a lot of good information from all these coaches, no matter what their level is, what they're doing. And, again, common threads are building culture, um, building kind of a, a team philosophy that then you stick with and being true to yourself. So, anyways, uh, a great interview this week. Thank you so much to Coach Chris from Whittier. And cannot wait to be able to get out there and see them play and compete. So, um, next week we got Brennan Dean, great club director from Wave uh, here in San Diego. And he's, again, he's another one. He's got a great, clear vision, and that's why his club has been so successful. So, be ready for that next week and take a listen to it. Thank you guys so much. Hey, if you're looking for some great clothing, new logo, uh, you need a great combination. Go to onestoneapparel.com, onestoneapparel.com. They made us this awesome logo that fit better onto a great polo shirt, hoodie, and they got all kinds of different uh, materials that you can choose from. So again, check them out, onestoneapparel.com. Email dave at onestoneapparel.com. Let them know Valuable Coaching sent you.